Weather radar is one of the essential tools for every meteorologist to keep up with current weather conditions. For people like me and you, radar can also be very useful since it's generally freely available. You can stay on top of storm movement, and you can also assess storm severity. In this video, we are going to look at some of the basics of reading weather radar, which will help you assess the strength of storms and even what you can expect next. The very first principle we want to make sure to convey is that radar is by its very design delayed data. Storms oftentimes visually will show what radar shows 10 to 20 minutes later. So if you are a storm spotter or a storm chaser, remember your eyes are the very first tool to assess storm strength and behavior. The very first screen we're going to look at here is the base reflectivity screen on weather radar. Now this is what you see on your local TV news, this is what you'll see on something like the Weather Channel. It's the very basic base radar product. And this shows precipitation falling. And you know, how weather radar works is that you have a transmitter and a receiver. And the transmitter will transmit radio waves out. And then that, those radio waves, they hit the precipitation and they'll scatter. And then the, you know, the radio waves that return back to the radar well, that's what the radar sees as the precipitation you see here on this screen. When looking at weather radar and you see, you know, all the bright colors, a lot of people will think red means bad, pink means worst, you know, maybe purple means absolute worst. There's a little bit of truth to that. Uh, you know, the darker the color, the more warm the color is, I guess, is the best way to put it. The more intense the rainfall usually is. Uh, you know, once you get to the green and the blues, that, that's light rain. And then you get yellow a little bit heavier. And then you get to red and pink. You know, that's the severest stuff that you usually will find in uh, thunderstorms. Now, let's also have a caveat here, though. The darker the color is, you know, the more red something is, the more orange, does not necessarily indicate severity, though, because you can get a severe storm with a very wimpy radar return. Uh, it all depends on a variety of factors. Sometimes uh, meteorologists looking at the radar won't know a storm is severe until someone like me or any other storm chaser reports, hey, there's huge hell falling out of this thing. So let, let's not concentrate too deeply on the fact that uh, you know, red means absolutely terrible. It does mean that heavy rain is falling, though. Now, you see Doppler radar measured in units called DBZ. Now, what does DBZ mean? It basically stands for decibel relative to Z. It's a logarithmic uh, dimensionless technical unit used in radar, uh, mostly weather radar, by the way. And it basically, I guess the best way to put it for uh, someone who's not a math or science nerd, it measures the radar signal relative to the radar location. And that's the measurement of DBZ. So let's take a look at two radar images really quick. So let's talk a little bit about reflectivity and what you can use it for. The very first thing is just seeing where is rain falling. Pretty simple, pretty basic, but that's exactly what you would use it for. Another thing would be to, uh, you know, be able to tell different things about a storm. First off, the storm at the very northern end of this with the hook echo and the ball at the end, that is an obvious signature of a rotating storm with a possible tornado. Pretty obvious. Then you have other storms to its west and southwest. Those also look to be quite strong. The one at the very bottom definitely looks to be a supercell as well. So you can always use radar to tell these things. The other thing is you use radar to tell you know, base reflectivity to really hone in on what a storm is doing, where it's going, uh, you know, as far as movement, is it strengthening, is it not? You can tell all of these things by base reflectivity. So let's jump ahead in time and see what these storms do roughly about an hour later. So you can see that we've got now a pretty well-developed supercell crossing the Red River, a lot smaller than the one to the north, the northern storm, still very strong, very HP, but it's very strong as well. And when you see a storm that's this big, has that big kind of kidney bean look, that's an HP supercell, and it just, I mean, you're, you're definite severe weather kind of threat there for sure. Now. Let's just uh, go back to what we said earlier. Just because there's no pink on this uh, image anymore, let's go back to the first one for a second. And you see, you know, the pink's gone on the second one compared to this one where there is pink. Just because that pink is gone on the second radar image, which you can now see here, and you know, you see again that the, the pink's gone. But that doesn't mean these storms have weakened too significantly. They still are definitely severe. How you tell that? Well, it's done via more skilled interpretation of radar. For most people's purposes, though, listening to this, 
these are very mean storms. They're big. There's a lot of red. You know, they're, they got heavy precip cores. You definitely don't want to be driving into those, and you definitely don't want to be caught outside as they approach you. Now let's take a look at what we call composite reflectivity. You notice how there's a lot less definition in the storms. Well, what is composite reflectivity? It basically shows the highest DBZ value at any tilt of the radar. Now we're going to have to back up for a second and talk about tilts. Let's go back to that very, uh, let's go back to the image that this one coincides with for a second on reflectivity. And you see this image shows base reflectivity, which is the very ground level radar returns that you see with the storm. This is what is falling at the lowest level the radar can detect. Uh, if you are not familiar with how radar works, it sends out a beam horizontally across the, uh, just straight horizontally. The earth will curve around, that's known as curvature, and actually the radar beam, as it gets further away from the radar, actually ends up further up in the atmosphere, scanning further and further up. So, you actually, with storms further away from the radar, you're not seeing what's falling at the ground, but rather, rather what the precipitation looks like a little bit further up above the surface. Now, back to composite reflectivity now for a second. And you can see there's a whole lot less definition of storm features. What you see is all of the precipitation, the very maximum values throughout the entire column and every tilt within the next rad radar. So what composite reflectivity is useful for? Well, you know, the big thing is, I think personally, is just telling how strong is a storm really uh, getting? Is it is it showing you... Or is it growing quickly? Is it shrinking, etc.? Composite reflectivity will definitely tell you that on a much more broad scale. It's kind of a cheat, so you don't have to look at every tilt. But at the same time, you won't be able to discern very specific low level features. Uh, you see a high radar return. You don't know if that radar return is actually at the surface or 30,000 feet up in the air. But I am a big fan of composite reflectivity because you can tell trends within a storm. If you have a big ball of pink and then all of a sudden that disappears on composite reflectivity, pretty good sign your updraft is weakening. At the end of the day, reflectivity is the base radar product you're going to use on a day-to-day -day level. It's going to be something that you just simply, it, it's what you have seen, it's what you've always seen. Now what we're going to do in the next couple of lessons, we're going to go deeper into the other radar products and we're going to really dive in as far as uh, things such as velocity, veal, echo tops, and we're going to assess what those mean in relation to severe weather and storm strength, etc. So just click right on through and we will see you on the other side.